द मोस्ट अवेटेड चिप ऑफ द ईयर एंड अ वेरी पावरफुल सक्सेसर टू एम वन इज हियर माई फ्रेंड्स फॉर आस टू टेस्ट एंड गिव आर ओपिनियंस ऑन इट बट बिफोर वी डाइवर्स इन टू एम टू वन गिव यू द टेस्ट रिजल्ट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव इन कमन ऑफ विद क्वेश्चन लाइक इज इट इवन वर्थ द एक्सपेंस वॉज द अपग्रेड गुड इनफ should you even consider buying an m2 powered mac for that matter is m2 stronger than m1 worry not because we're going to be addressing all these queries in today's episode and hopefully testing out the device for you towards the end of the episode so stay tuned hello and welcome to the igeeks blog show an apple exclusive podcast I'm your host Harshanki and we're going to be talking about M1 versus M2 in today's episode. Before we begin, do not forget to connect with our social media channels and just hit us up with any and every Apple related query that you have because I Geek's blog show is all about all things Apple. Now see I agree there have been a lot of uh, blogs and informative content by fellow cre- uh, content creators already out there. So what I'm going to be doing about is bringing this one particular query to your attention that will help you take the right decision whether or not should you be investing in an m2 powered laptop and is m2 really stronger than m1 or we are just testing the waters here m2 is basically the larger version of m1 similar core layouts however it has two extra graphic layouts which means it has four performance cores four efficiency cores and two additional graphic cores making it a 10 core chipset m2 has an improved bandwidth of 50% up to 100 gigabytes per second performance by giving it a max of 24 gb of even faster ddr5 ram They are also upgraded the neural engine by making it forty freaking percent faster than M1. According to Apple's numbers, the CPU is a striking eighteen percent faster. The GPU is thirty five percent faster, which should make this a powerhouse, right? I mean, how good can this machine get? Is it really the case, though? Is it? Well, let's dig deeper. Now if you are a loyal listener of the iGeeks blog show you would remember this one episode where we talk about A14 and M1 and made the comparisons between both the chipsets that whether A14 and M1 are basically the same chip or M1 is an evolved version of A14 Now if you remember the conclusion what we concluded was yes it is related of course a lot of things especially the cores are similar however the performance and a lot tons of other things are different right you can say it is a it is based on a14 but it cannot be replicated nor replaced similarly when m2 came into the market this question was brought up again especially after seeing the performance scores that whether a15 could have been a good replacement to m2 or was m2 not needed at all or is a15 or m2 basically the same now this is what we're going to be digging right now because whenever you're trying to buy a new gadget or or a new device to that matter see for most of us i'm going to be very very honest brutally honest here with you guys for most of us even m1 was way more powerful than we could possibly imagine right back in the days when it was announced my god seems like a really really long time doesn't it yeah but it was what i'm trying to convey here is that m1 itself was such an overpowering device with the majority of us that when m2 came in the market we had our expectations high but for daily activities and pretty much all the 9 to 5 jobs unless you are into hardcore tech and you need like those hardwares and stuff to get the job done our job was being done just fine with m1 power chipsets as well so m2 definitely stands as an upgrade for us and it has better performances really strong performances much better faster to be very honest with you M1 also took us by surprise. I mean the performance that that baby gave us back in the days. Oh my god, was that mind blowing, right? It just overpowered our laptops. It just gave us the fastest performance back in the days being the 
thinnest and the sleekiest design that you could possibly imagine it they were pretty much like smoothing our everyday life right m2 was not needed to us as such i mean for majority of people who are living a day to day life and like dealing with you know basic activities m1 did the job just fine so it is going to be pretty normal on our part you know if we sit and think about it whether m2 is a great upgrade we need or not or should we just be contented with m1 and this is why we're going to be making a thorough comparison here of whether or not should you be getting m2 or stick with your m1 device now i went through a lot of subreddits the other day and what i could read was people were calling m2 an m1.5 rather than describing it as a new upgrade altogether and here's why that is happening m2 is claiming to have 35% faster gpu performance when compared to m1 but what you need to really understand and read between the lines is that m2 also has 25% more gpu cores compared to m1 so automatically it is going to give you 25% faster performance even if the additional cores were not added that additional cores are not responsible for giving you a 35% faster performance is just the 10 extra percentage or 10% faster performance that we're looking at is because of the additional cores added there right so if you look at the whole scenario you know and if you compare m2 and m1 even with the same cores if m2 was introduced no we would have gotten 25% faster performance anyway that is not a question beyond doubt it had to be that way which means apple is trying to slyly hide this fact by giving you better numbers or stronger numbers and claiming to make the device 35% faster okay this is why people and some youtubers for that matter are calling m2 to be an m1.5 rather than believing it as a whole new generation of chipsets okay now there was this absurd video that i watched the other day where a really popular youtuber with millions of followers has claimed a15 and m2 to be identical because they look similar now this is beyond my understanding and i strongly with all due respect to that youtuber i strongly disagree to this point because just because two things look similar see i agree uh, a15 is made on 5 nanometers and this is also built on 5 and second generation 5 nanometer right so if you look at the deep shot pictures of uh, both the chipsets they are going to be looking identical however they do not function identical right the performance is vastly different from what we are looking at from what we are trying to understand so i completely disagree to this point that just because things are looking similar doesn't mean they are literally the same chip or apple has just copy pasted a15 things and just put it in m2 and hastily come up with a chip now see you need to understand and maybe travel back a little in time and think about the intel days when apple used to have intel chipsets back in the days we used to see exponential increment right i mean i don't remember a single mac coming having more than 5% of performance increase and this is a huge freaking 35% performance boost right it takes time it takes time to give you a number that is so freaking faster you have to test it you have to squeeze a lot of things on a nanometer scale to make this shit happen to work this thing out right and what apple has done with m2 is incredible in itself now don't get me wrong here i am not saying that m2 is a bad device or it is the godfather of the new chipsets okay we are somewhere hanging in the middle because to be very honest with you i haven't tested the device i need to test the device before claiming or agreeing to apple's numbers or talking about its performance for that matter but when you think about it and when you travel back in time what we are getting is way more than what we expected right but i have to mention this point that i'm really looking forward for m3 revolution because it will be built on 3 nanometer and that is going to be completely different and i can only imagine how fast that baby is going to be for us so it's going to be incredible right so m3 is something i'm looking forward for but as you've seen the development of m1 also like it 
it was introduced and then we had the m1 successors right m1 family members being introduced in the next year so we have to wait for the pro and m2 pro and max to come out and then we'll have m3 probably in 2024 so let's wait for that to happen and see how the third generation of m series chips is going to come out now the reason i'm explaining this to you is because being a loyal member of the apple ecosystem if you're receiving something with a better upgrade, an entire new generation of chipset, your thought process would be, should I buy this gadget or not? Is it worth the money that I'm gonna be putting in? Is it really that fast? How about not spending that kind of money because M2 is clearly not faster than M1 Pro in a lot of ways, right? This, it does ring a bell, right? These questions are pretty relatable. I mean, you cannot help but think about these things when a new version is introduced in the market. Now, as a consumer, and most of you would agree to it, you do not upgrade your laptop. No, 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 the Apple lovers are going to hate me for this. You do not upgrade your MacBook every year because there is a better version out there. Average shelf life of a MacBook should be three years, according to me. I mean, I get a new system in every three to five years, depending upon my requirements. Mostly three, three and a half years has been a pretty smooth window for me where the device functions amazingly well. All the software updates I'm receiving on a timely intervals and no such issues of, you know, any compatibility or anything else like that. So if I've gotten into the M family already, then I don't think I'm going to be upgrading to M2 just yet. Unless it's for testing it out for you guys. I mean, then I would. But I don't think I'd use it on a daily basis, right? I would probably wait for M3 to come out and just let this M1 Air live its life of, of its own. Wait for it, right? But since we're talking about what's better in M2, because uh, till now, all we did was just compare the performance and help you understand, okay, it's pretty much an exaggerated version of M1 with additional cores. But there is one thing that M2 has is much much better than M1 Pro and it makes M2 Air one of the best laptops, one of the best MacBooks out there for any video editors or content creators. As you all know, M2 supports 8K H.264, HEVC and Pro Resolution video encoding and decoding, which is a huge improvement compared to M1 where these things were not supported before. Not just that, if M2 is able to export 8K at 30fps, which means, think about this, okay? If M2 is exporting 8K videos at 30fps, which means it is going to export 4K videos at 120fps, making it one of the most ideal devices for video editors out there. Because how faster has the conversion and exporting become from these uh, for these editors, right? Now, this is one thing where absolutely you should consider getting an M2 Air if you are in the content creation industry or if audio audio editing or video editing is your forte. Video editing, precisely, is your forte. Then M2 Air is a great upgrade and definitely worth your money. But if you're someone like me who just has an remote work or office work or just using it for the basic necessities and if you're already a part of the m1 family then i don't think you should really consider moving to m2 as such wait for m3 to come out enjoy your days with m1 and then think about upgrading to a new device since apple has always been so considerate about the environment and like everything we have to talk about the power efficiency of M2 and M1 because that is another part where M2 is kind of taking the lead and is doing much better compared to M1. M2 chip is surely maintaining the M series power consumption legacy because it is working faster and more efficient with the same power consumption that M1 was surviving. The results on the charts you can see it on your screen right now. So not much significant difference, I would say, but still better than what we had, right? And that kind of is expected from Apple and this is going to happen. And this is an exponential growth. 
if you ask me about it it is an exponential growth because in, even in the chips further mm. n- not just m3 and the m2 successors are also going to see a similar kind of development which will make it better and highly efficient at the same power consumption not a deciding factor but just makes you feel good and better and it's the little things that you got to do for the environment right moving on before i conclude this episode your concern still remains the same whether or not should you invest in an m2 powered macbook or stick to the m1 powered macbook and which of these two chipsets is the better version i have to admit that since m2 is an upgrade it is a better version to m1 in a lot of ways okay maybe not the higher variance but there is a you you cannot define a clear winner here but of course there are a certain things where m2 is way better and there are a certain things where m1 pro or max are better compared to m2 so whether or not should you be putting your money in is the question of the hour simply put and this is how i function that if you are a part of the m1 family you should not buy m2 just yet be happy with your macbook or device for the next couple of years and then wait for m3 to come and then invest in a new device on the other hand if you are still stuck with the intel chipset it wouldn't be a bad idea to upgrade to either m1 or m2 depending upon your budget and your requirements because both of them are more than capable than what the competition is in the market these days so this is how it's going to work out and i hope you are able to take the right decision because the points are very clearly laid out for you i hope it gave you some transparency into how m2 chipset was developed and what are the things taken into consideration and how is it making m2 a better chipset Well that's all from my side. I hope this episode gave you some clarity into both the chipsets and which is the best suitable chipset for you because at the end of the day we can only list out the pros and cons for you. It is you and only you who is going to take the right decision. I'm Harshanki signing off and I'm going to see you guys next week with more exciting content probably testing a gadget for you. So stay tuned to the iGeeks blog show. Stay connected and don't forget to check out our app. Take care.